Welcome to Lion Pride Sports, I'm Neil Fisher. Golf is a tough sport, mentally and physically, and it doesn't help to play in the middle of Missouri where the weather is always changing. But the Linwood men's and women's golf teams have been handling the clubs very well over the last few years. Today we'll have the chance to talk to both coaches. Joining us now, the women's golf head coach, Abby Weber. Coach, how are you doing? Good, thanks. The uh, team has done a great job so far this spring. What has led up to that success? Uh, yeah, the girls, we just came off of uh, two tournaments over spring break down in Arizona. Uh, the girls took second place at the first tournament, and they won the second tournament uh, coming from behind after the first day. Um, we've, you know, over the last few years built a pretty strong program, and luckily we have uh, four uh, girls that, you know, that bring some senior leadership to the program. Um, and. You know, we're just kind of going off of that. What does that leadership mean to you going into those days where you're down and then you have to come back and, and get back and win? Uh, it really helps uh, to pump up, you know, the underclassmen and to just kind of be mentally tough, like you said, uh, especially because the weather here lately has not been that great. So we haven't been a chance. We haven't really had a chance to get on the golf course as much as we'd like. So, you know, going down to Arizona, we were able to get a couple of nice days of good weather just to get some additional practice in. But uh, that'll give us a little momentum heading into the remainder of our spring season. And you mentioned that the weather has been horrible. Um, before going to Arizona, how many practices did you guys get to go outside for? Uh, the girls played 18 holes one time, and I think they played nine holes twice. Um, luckily, we have a driving range that we're able to go to uh, that has heating bays. So even when the weather's you know not that great, they can still hit balls, but it's not the same as actually getting on the golf course. So how impressed were you with the fact that the girls went out there and got second place in one tournament and first place in the other? I was really proud of the girls. Um, they did a great job, especially because they were uh, five strokes back the second tournament and came uh, from behind to, uh, to beat uh, a conference opponent. And so, um, you know, they went out, they worked hard, and... I was proud of, of their effort. Is that what impressed you the most is coming back from five strokes? Yeah, you know, it's hard. Uh, each, each round, you never know what golf game is going to show up for you. So it's, it's a battle, and you got to get through all 18 holes, which, you know, sometimes can be anywhere from five to six hours. So, you know, they didn't quit on me, and that's something that I, um, I think the girls are, they're, they're pretty mentally tough, um, and that's probably what helped them to come back that second day. And you guys have a lot of traveling to do for golf. You guys go to SIUC mm -hmm. and then you guys uh, head down to Arkansas. Does that affect the golf game at all? Uh, you know, going, traveling to different parts, uh, different areas, you have different grass. So, you know, sometimes the greens are different um, and just the fairways, uh, if they're native to that area. So the girls have to figure out during the practice round, you know, how to adjust, make adjustments in their golf game. Um, but hopefully, um, going down to Arkansas, we'll get some nice weather. Is there any like pre-game or pre-tournament scouting that you guys do as a team to um, really see what is working well for you guys or calling courses and saying, hi, uh, what kind of grass do you have and what's it going to play like? Um, y you know, you, can, you could probably just research that on, on your own on, on the internet. A lot of these tournaments we've played in, in the past, so some of the girls, if not all the girls have played some of these golf courses. Uh, the course we're going to play in Arkansas, one of my players is from Arkansas, and she's played this golf course before. So during the practice round, the other girls will probably rely on her to give you know, um, any insider information um, for that golf course. And you guys have three tournaments to go before the conference tournament, correct? Mm -hmm. And what goes into that? Do you guys see the MIAA opponents that you're going to see in the conference tournament during those tournaments or not so much? Uh, yeah, at SIU Carbondale, that's a Division One tournament um, and kind of close to home. So we won't see anybody there. But uh, Henderson State is the team hosting the tournament in Arkansas. And they're in our region. And they'll have uh, a handful of our conference schools will be there. So it'll be an important tournament from a regional regional ranking perspective. Is that important to see how they're playing uh, while you guys are doing your taking care of your business? Yeah, I mean it's it's a battle all 
uh, all year long essentially you know you got to get the head-to-heads and you want to um, try to get your scoring your team scoring average as low as possible so that when it comes to the end of April, you're in the you know top 12 teams to get to go to postseason. And how does that work? The postseason um, rankings come out. How do they work? Uh, there's a there's a small coaches uh, uh, regional ranking committee, and um, they put all the stats together, head to head scoring average, and um, they kind of rank all. Of, I think. Currently in our region, there's, I think, about around 30 to 35 schools, and so they just kind of stack them, and then they have representation from each of the conferences that give their input, and so you just want to make sure you're in the top 12 because that's the way that you get to get the invitation to that uh, regional tournament. And you guys in the program at Lindenwood has done a phenomenal job of getting to that tournament um, mm -hmm. the past couple of years. What does that mean to you? I know you played at Lindenwood, so what does that mean to you to be able to coach a team that can go to the tournament? Uh, you know, it, it's definitely um, something that we pride ourselves on as a program and myself as a, as a coach. We've qualified for the regional tournament uh, every year we've been eligible since we've been an NCAA program, uh, which is a pretty big accomplishment. Um, next year we are switching conferences, which also sw switches our region. So we'll be going from a central region to the east region. Um, and so hopefully we'll continue this success, uh, you know, but we'll be competing against a whole new uh, playing field. Is the GLVC, uh, how does the GLVC and the MIAA stack up against each other when it comes down to it? Uh, well, the GLVC currently has two schools that are probably in the top 10 in the country. Um, so they're really competitive, uh, probably not as deep from a com uh, competitive level, whereas the MIAA has a lot of good schools, but not, you know, the top of na mm -hmm. nationally ranked, I, yeah. I guess I should say. So who is going to be the toughest test for you guys when you get down to the conference tournament to take on? Um, for the MIAA? Yes. There, there's probably mm -hmm. about six teams that all have uh, a good shot of winning the conference tournament. So it'll just be which which girls showed up to play for those three days. So it's just all up for grabs. There's yes. six teams in the middle of the pack and yep. just all really good teams. And yes. That's so, awesome. And we're playing a different golf course, a new golf course that we've never played before. So it really is, you know, it, it could be anybody's uh, championship. So do you guys, the night you get there, go to the course and prepare? Or is it more of just the practice round you prepare and then just the practice run. Is that difficult for for the players or do they do a fairly good job of reading it when they can and then Yeah, I mean it's it's difficult because I think we have about a four and a half or five hour drive to co to conference so we'll get up early, get in a car, you know, drive in a car for four and a half five hours, get up, play a four or five hour practice round, um, get back to the hotel pretty late and then probably wake up at 6.30, 6, 6.30 the next morning, get out to the golf course about 7.30 in the morning, be there till 6. Um, so it's, I mean, it, that's a, for four days, it's like that. Is there a way of relaying, so if one group tees off and then one group tees off later, of relaying where the holes are, when the pins are located and stuff like that? Uh, I mean, that's probably pretty difficult because you only have one or two coaches and all the girls will go off in order. So mm -hmm. typically the coaches will station at par threes um, and that you just try to, you know, contact all your, you know, have contact with all your players to kind of see how they're doing. So if you're in the last group, you usually have an advantage because all the other girls have gone before you. So you should know what club to hit, you know, which way the ball is going to break when you putt, um, those kinds of things. But, is there a certain way you stack up which players go in what order? Uh, typically it goes five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So, and then that's just based on, you know, the, the level of the player. Okay. So going into SIUC, mm -hmm. what do you guys have to work on from Arizona? I know Arizona was good, but what do you guys have to work on the most? Short game. Um, again, the weather's not been very, very good to us the last couple of months. So short game, putting, chipping, it's all based on feel and repetition. And we haven't really had a, a chance to, you know, get that feel back from our, you know, our playing in the fall. So 
we are we have nice weather this week. We're going to spend a lot of time on the greens and uh, working on our short game because we lost a lot of strokes probably just in three putts and um, not getting the ball up and down. How difficult is that to play that fall season and f the weather's fairly nice and then to take that long break and then come back out in mid-March and, and compete? It's definitely a completely different season. You'll have a lot of schools that are uh, playing really well in the fall because a lot of their players come in hot from playing all summer. And spring golf is a completely different animal. Um, and I think that's kind of where we thrive because we're practicing in pretty crappy weather. And, you know, it just helps the girls get more mentally tough so that if we have that kind of weather in our tournaments, they usually persevere a little bit better than their, uh, their competitors. And I want to get to you and you playing at Lindenwood. What was your best experience playing for Lindenwood? Uh, my best experience was probably uh, my sophomore year. We qualified for the national tournament, and we went down to Florida and played at LPGA International. And um, it was a pretty cool experience. And last year we qualified for the national tournament for the first time since we were an NCAA school. So it was um, it's kind of come full circle for me, you know, with being able to take my team to the national tournament um, and have played in a national tournament it w for the same school. It was a pretty cool experience. And is there anything else you'd like to add uh, before we go about uh, what's in store for the rest of the season, how everything's going to work out? Uh, this year they added an extra team uh, to qualify for the national tournament through postseason. So instead of three schools, four schools now qualify. So, you know, I think we have a pretty good shot at uh, having a repeat to the national tournament if if the girls want it bad enough, so we're excited to see what's going to happen. That's good. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. That will do it for Lindenwood women's golf coach Abby Weber. Good luck to the women's team as they compete at Southern Illinois Carbondale March 24th and 25th. Coming up, we'll ta talk about the men's golf team and what's in store for them this season next on Lion Pride Sports. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom got me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at day. school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. You got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to Lion Pride Sports. I'm Neil Fisher. Lindenwood men's golf team has their home invitational coming up right around the corner. Joining me now from the men's golf team is head coach Derek Schaub. Coach, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, what was the biggest difference coming from the fall to the spring? Well, I think uh, the fall we went into with a lot of confidence. Um, you know, com coming off of last year, we had a disappointing finish. We had a, a great, great season, probably the best season in our history. And, 
didn't have such a such a good tournament at the uh, Super Regionals. So I think we were a very hungry team coming in. Um, played very well, probably the best fall we've ever had in the history of the program. And then uh, the spring came, and along came some some really bad weather. And uh, you know, some of that I put on myself for scheduling. It's the earliest we've ever played a tournament mid-February. Typically, we start the first week of March. But uh, you know, the last few years we've been able to be on the golf course every day in February. And the year that I schedule a big tournament in February <laughs> is the year that we weren't able to get out. So. It, uh, I, I kind of felt bad for the guys to put them in that situation and go play uh, the tournament we did in Kiowa Island. Um, but they, they adjusted and uh, they, they definitely work hard, pers persevered through it. You know, the first day was, was a tough one. We didn't play nearly as well as we'd hoped to, um, but turned it around the second day and actually shot the third best score um, in the tournament on, on day two. So it, uh, I feel like we're, we're definitely headed in the right direction. And from playing in that middle of, the, middle of the month February tournament and only getting out a few times before going down there. Yeah, the first day may not have been what you wanted or what you expected, but that second day may have set the tone for what's to come the rest of the season, right? It definitely did. You know, we, 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 have, we always have a team meeting, you know, after every round. And when we met uh, Monday night, you know, the big thing I talked to them about was don't focus on the outcome of this tournament, the results of this tournament. This tournament is a tool for us to be better come April and May. And uh, I think that maybe re relaxed the guys a little and, and they, you know, kind of took a step back and realized why we were there. And, you know, we didn't get the results we wanted there, but it was good to be there playing golf versus being here and uh, hitting balls off of a mat into a net inside. Yeah, I mean, it had to be a great learning experience to play against other guys and see other people competing out there against them and, and have that competition aspect growing and not just hitting the ball as far as they can or trying to just chip it in off the green right next to them. Yeah, it, uh, it definitely, I think, helped the guys mentally because, you know, I think guys were kind of starting to get down with the weather. So it was nice to get out, um, you know, decent weather. You know, we're playing at the Ocean Course in Keough Island. You know, um, the greatest players in the game have played there. So it was uh, a, a great experience for the guys and, and a great challenge for them to, to play on a golf course that difficult. And, and also, it, it was good for us to, to come out and play so bad the first day and kind of see how we dealt with it. And, and I couldn't have been more proud, you know, that the guys didn't just pack it in and, hey, we're out of it. We have no chance of winning this tournament. But they came out the second day and, uh, and battled and, like I said, you know, played, played really, really well for round three. And that's one thing that I play baseball, so seeing that is, yeah, you may lose the first two games of the series, but then come that third one, you better sneak away with a victory or else they're going to be all happy on the other side. <laughs> and, and then you have something to look forward and build off of going into the next week of practice. And that's what I want to get to is what is this week of practice going to be like? Um, this week is a, a lot of short game. Um, you know, that's, that's the toughest thing this time of year. Um, you know, your full swing is using your big muscles, so that comes back pretty easily. But around the greens, you're chipping, you're putting, that's all touch and feel stuff. So, um, you know, we're spending a lot of time this week just working on chipping and putting. Um, you know, some different areas of the golf course that we're looking at with some holes, because the golf course is going to play different than we're used to. Uh, it's pretty soft right now because of the rain that we've had. There's rain in the forecast for the tournament. So, uh, so we're looking at some different areas. That, hey, it might be better to play this hole, maybe lay back and not hit driver on this hole because it's, you know, if you lay back 30 yards, you're going to be hitting off of better grass than off of you know, a, a soft patch of grass, even though you're in the fairway. And that's what the Linwood Invitational is coming up March 24th and 25th. Uh, does that help you playing at home? I know the weather is kind of turning. You, you don't see the as cold of a forecast anymore, but the rain's starting to come in heavily. Uh, is that an is that a advantage for you guys to have? Um, I think, you know, it's an advantage having you on your home course. At the same time, there's a little pressure there because the guys expect that they should play better there. It's a course they play all the time. So, um, it you know, it's, it's always nice to play on your home course, um, you know, sleep in your own beds. Um, but at the same time it is, you know, we play – you know, 12 tournaments a year and 11 of those are on the road. So your home tournament really is the one that kind of takes you out of your routine. You know, we don't have our normal routine because the guys aren't together for every meal. They're eating in the cafeteria here. They're, you know, sleeping in eight different rooms instead of all in three hotel rooms. So 
it uh, it does change some things a little bit, but uh, it's always fun to play here and you know have have some people come out and uh, you know have a little gallery there cheering for you. And how what is that feeling like uh, having people follow you from hole to hole, watching you and knowing that they care about what you're doing and yeah. and how you're doing? <clears throat> um, it's good. Um, I, I think sometimes it puts puts a little pressure um, on some of the guys and. Uh, which, which is a good experience as well. You know, it, it helps them develop, you know, as a golfer, as a person to, to deal with those type of, uh, you know, it's, it's a foreign situation for them. And so I think it's good for them to, uh, to learn from it, learn how to handle it. Um, you know, sometimes they don't handle it the best, but they're better prepared for it the next time it comes around. And so you mentioned that going on the road is kind of the norm to do. Um, does that affect your playing when you go far away to South Carolina and places such like that? Um, I, it does. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, you know, with golf, it's a very different game on different grasses. So, uh, you know, a lot of times you go somewhere and your, your ball flight's going to be different because of the air. Um, so, you know, where, where you may normally hit a seven iron, now you're hitting an eight or maybe a six. Um, same thing with the grass, you know, the ball's going to jump a little more when you're hitting off of bent grass versus off of zoysia. Uh, the greens become very different in how the ball reacts on your approach shots as well as how it breaks. So that's the big thing for us. The travel, I think most of the guys are used to it. Um, I, don't, I don't think it really affects us a whole lot. Um, we try and, you know, get away early. You know, our typical tournaments practice around Sunday, 36 holes Monday, 18 Tuesday. but. We typically try and get in Saturday evening and try and get to the course and at least do some short game work on Saturday, just some chipping and putting around the green for a couple hours. And then we get our practice round on Sunday and then we'll usually stick around for another hour or two after that and, uh, and get some work in on the short game as well. Is there a certain style of ball or clubs that you uh, personally uh, stick to with certain kinds of grass? Um, I, I prefer the balls that go in the hole. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, no, it's, it's really up, up to our guys. I mean, different guys, you know, hit, hit balls with higher spin rates or lower spin rates. So, um, you know, mo most of our guys use pretty much the same ball, but we do have a couple guys that use a different ball. But um, you'll see some guys adjust and maybe carry a two iron in their bag instead of an extra wedge, depending on the golf course, depending on how some holes lay out, depending on the weather. Um, you know, if it's a firm, fast golf course, you'll see a lot of our guys carrying two irons that they'll hit off the tee then. Um, you know, but if it's going to be soft like we're looking forward to next week we'll probably most guys will be just going with the three iron and add an extra wedge in the bag and that's what looking forward to the Linwood Invitational what are you expecting uh, for that tournament and with all the other competitors coming in um, it, it, it's gonna be a really competitive tournament um, there's there's a lot of teams right now that are really close and battling you know in our region for uh, for those top 10 spots to make it to the regional tournament at the end of the year so uh, I think it'll be it'll be very competitive. I think you'll see a lot of teams grouped right there at the top together. Um, largest field we've ever had. We'll have 19 teams in the field, so uh, it it should be a good one. Is that a long day for for the athletes? Uh, get there early in the morning, practice, or yeah. being at home? Do you get to sleep in a little bit, rest because <clears throat> you know the course and and where what everything's going to play out? No, it's uh, it's it's a long week um, for us. You know. We'll be out there Sunday. The guys will probably get to the course around noon on Sunday, do some practice. We'll go out play our practice round. Uh, I think our tee time's at 2.30. So we'll be at the golf course until probably about 7.30, 8 o'clock. By the time they get back to campus, it's 8.30, 9 o'clock. Hopefully get to bed quickly. And then, uh, you know, Monday they'll be at the course at 6.30 in the morning. Um, you know, we tee off at 8 a.m. So. They'll be there at 6.30, hitting some balls, getting warmed up. Um, 8 o'clock, we probably won't finish until about 7 p.m., 7.30 on uh, Monday evening. So then it's back to campus, team meeting, hit the beds, and uh, back out there for 8 o'clock start on Tuesday as well. So moving forward, you don't have that many tournaments remaining, uh, but how do you guys look forward to, like, conference? Do you look forward to it at all, or do you just focus on – the Linwood Invitational is coming up, and this is the one we're playing, and this is what we're focusing on now. Yeah, I think um, it, it kind of varies from year to year. A lot of it has to do depending on where you're currently ranked. Um, you know, right now we're we're ranked pretty well in our regional rankings, so um, I, I feel pretty comfortable that that we should be a lock to make the regional tournament this year. So we're preparing now 
more long term versus immediate at hand. Um, obviously, we want the results. We, you know, our home tournament. You always want to take care of business there. But um, you know, we're not rushing preparation. Like we have to have everything intact for this. It's you know, it's it's a process, and the big thing is to make sure we're at the top of our game come April. Um, conference championship tournament will be a big one for us. The week before that is our last conference tournament of the year. And uh, you know, last year we won the regular season as well as the uh, the tournament championship. So something definitely that. Uh, is is a big a big box we want to check on our agenda for the season is to repeat with both of those and then uh, prepare for uh, regionals and hopefully nationals after that. And what was that feeling like? I don't know if uh, the whole team was there last year as now this year that's playing, but what was the feeling like winning that championship during the regular season and then going to the tournament yeah. and winning again? It, uh, it was pretty special because the, the championship tournament, actually, you accumulate points. And so that tournament, actually, those points count for the regular season as well. And uh, going into it, it was, it was a long shot for us to leapfrog some teams. We had to hope some other teams didn't play as well. And uh, fortunately, some of them didn't, fortunately for us. And, uh, you know, we took care of business. So it was, uh, it was kind of unexpected. And uh, we, we knew we had to come up with something really special. So it was... It was awesome as a team, and then, you know, the individual awards we had, you know, with Marcus Lindgren winning the conference championship as an individual, and Yente clinching the player of the year was uh, That's great. You know, just icing on the cake. That's great. Thank you, Coach. Thank you to Coach Schaub and Coach Weber for joining me. Good luck the rest of the season. The men will be competing in the Linwood Invitational March 25th and 26th, while the women will be competing at Southern Illinois Carbondale March 24th and 25th. That will do it for the show. I'm Neil Fisher. Thanks for watching Lion Pride Sports.